Hi there, thanks for joining. Highlights are the very lightest parts in the light parts of an object. These are the areas where the light source hits the object most directly. And when you paint them a little bit correctly, they contribute a lot to the sense of depth in your painting. And you might say, why make a video about highlights? You just drop in some white dots and it's okay. Well, you can do that, but that's not always the most realistic solution. Highlights are often less bright than we think and often contain more color than we realize. So sure, you can paint a white blob, but if you want to paint realistically, it's better to learn how to observe carefully and ask yourself, what color do I actually see in the highlight and how light or dark is it in reality? In portraits, you often find highlights on the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, the forehead and the chin. And that's simply because those are the parts that stick out the most and therefore catch the most light. But that's not always the case, it's often the case. In still lifes, highlights are usually quite clear on shiny and reflective objects like glass, metal, ceramics, but also on fruit, and just to name some examples. In landscapes, you mostly see highlights on water surfaces like rivers, lakes and seas, but you'll also encounter them on leaves, flowers, grass, snow and so on. Now there are a few factors that determine how a highlight looks. The first is the light source. What type of light source, light source is it? Is it a tube light, a candle, the sun, you name it. The, these all have different kind of color temperatures and forms. So what color temperature does it have and how intense is the light? But then of course the texture of the objects themselves play a role as well. When the object is super smooth, you'll get stronger highlights. If the subject is a little bit more rough, you'll get more diffuse, softer highlights. Here you see an example of a very smooth dolphin with water on it. And that will provide for a very sharp highlight. And here is a lion. And there you see very light parts as well, but because of his fur, you have a very different texture and that gives way softer highlights. Also, the viewer's perspective matters. A highlight can look very different from one angle than from another. So, a different viewpoint can greatly change the intensity and shape of the highlight. And how a highlight appears is also somewhat influenced by the color of the object itself and as well as the colors in the surrounding environment, which can also play a role. Oh, speaking of lights, the lights went out. These are also very high lights. Anyway, the most difficult part of painting again is observing. Huh? So it's not the painting process itself of paint, uh, putting paint on the, on, the, on the canvas. And color mixing in itself isn't that difficult. But how do you observe correctly what you see? That's the most difficult part because our brain constantly tricks us. So of course I've got some tips for you. And the first tip is a very easy one but very effective. Uh, if you look at a highlight... You can just take a regular piece of printer paper. Most of the times they are very white. I need to photograph. And if I say, okay, here these light parts, how light is this part here? Is it really white? I can compare it with the white of my print paper. And then I see it is almost white, but it still contains a little bit of color. So that's one thing. Another thing you can do is isolate colors. Take a piece of cardboard, cut out a small viewing hole and place that on the photo. And this way you can more clearly see what color you're actually looking at because the color is isolated and you're not longer tricked by the surrounding colors. You can also use the back of your palette knife. You try to mix the color that you see, then you put the paint on the back side of your uh, palette knife and you compare that with the source color. And of course, maybe your color is too light or too dark, then you can adjust that. Now, also, when dealing with highlights, eh, most of the times those colors are very, very light. When mixing light colors, it's always important to remember that, that you very carefully add other colors to that light color. 
because light colors very quickly change. They get darker instantly and they get more color instantly. So for instance, if I do a little bit too much orange in this light color, then immediately it's completely orangey. So if you want to adjust a light color, always take very, very tiny steps. Another thing we saw is that highlights sometimes contain quite a lot of color still. So uh, when you see a highlight you might be tempted to just immediately grab titanium white, white to make the color light. And that can be great, but keep in mind that white also cools down the color. Yeah, so the, the color is relatively less warm than it was before. And that you can also see that in the video about making colors lighter with white, yellow or a combination of white and yellow. As some colors in light form need to remain a little bit warm. So you can also make colors lighter by adding white in combination with yellow. And sometimes you can make colors lighter by, by even adding only yellow. And in that regard it's also fun to look at some very light colors that are available. So we have titanium white, that's of course just white, but it's a very opaque color, so it's very handy, that pigment. But there are also shortcuts for, uh, for example, for rather warm light colors. I have here for instance titanium buff dark. And they call it dark because it is darker than titanium white. Yeah, but that's ever so slightly. This can be of course a shortcut to light colors that you need. And when you look on the jar in this case or on the tube, you can see what pigments it contains. And this typical color, this Titan Buff Deep, it contains PW6 and that is titanium white. This, this is only PW6, this bottle. This contains PW6 but it also contains PR. 101 and PR 101 is burnt sienna and also PBK 11 and that is oxide black. You see? And titanium white. So these three colors are mixed to make titanium buff uh, deep in this case. And it can vary a little bit uh, depending on the brand. Uh, but uh, that is fun to uh, to realize. Uh, but this can, so you, uh, I wanted to say you can mix these light colors yourself, of course. But when you've got more experience and want shortcuts, then of course that's possible by buying colors like this. Here I have another example. It's also uh, it's slightly darker than white, you see. And this is called Naples Yellow Light. And Naples Yellow Light. Let's take a look what that contains. It contains PW6, so it contains titanium white, and it contains PY42, so that's raw sienna. You immediately see that this uh, color is a little bit darker than titanium white and also it has a warm feel to it. It can be very useful for highlights eh, as, a, as, a, as a shortcut. That was a little bit of a sidetrack, but with highlights you often see that it's not just boom, a light dot on a surface. Uh, there are no rules, so always keep in mind, keep uh, observing for yourself as well. Uh, but often you see that the lightest part gets connected to the surrounding colors with a, a kind of uh, in-between value or color. Uh, and in that regard, it's the same as what I uh, uh, explained and uh, I did a demo in the video about glowing objects. And there's another thing that often gets people tripped up, that is of course that uh, when you are concentrating on dark areas, for instance in this portrait, when you stare at this dark part and you see a lighter part, you might be tempted to think, oh a highlight, huh? bam, let's drop a light color on top of that. Uh, but keep in mind, try to zoom out of the picture. So I do it here literally, but try to do that in your mind when you are painting and looking at the photograph or at the model. And then you get the total picture and then you see, oh, the color that I thought was rather light is in reality rather dark when you compare it to the real highlights. So that's also why most of the times it's good when you start a painting to first search for what are the absolutely darkest parts and what are the absolutely lightest parts. Then you immediately know that the rest is either light, uh, lighter or darker. So that already helps. 
Here a little example, you see this egg and it has a light side and it has a dark side. And there is a part where the light cannot hit the egg anymore and then there is the shadow part. In the light area you have the lightest light and then you have a slightly darker light area, so to speak. And the same goes for the shadow area. In the shadow area you have the most dark shadow parts in this egg, in this instance. And then uh, when we go a little bit downward here, you see that there is a slightly lighter part in the shadows and that is because of the reflected light. And the light bouncing back into the shadow and therefore making the shadow slightly lighter again. But that doesn't mean that we have a highlight in that shadow. It's just a lighter part in the shadow. It is a different thing than the highlight on top of the egg. Now for this video I also quickly made some uh, color uh, sketches. Uh, here you see me uh, trying to replicate that feeling of that highlight on that boat. Uh, and that is a light color, but as you can see on the palette it is a very light blue color, but it isn't white. Uh, it contains color. And what I usually do is I paint the surroundings for instance, then I drop in that light part. But after that I try to connect these values by mixing an uh, in-between value, so to speak. So I mix the lightest color with that slightly darker color on my palette and I then quickly mix, blend them on my canvas. And then you see that that effect starts happening eh, of that highlighted part. So there is already a great effect even though it, is, it doesn't contain pure white. So what I want to say is you don't need pure white to have a big uh, highlight effect or something. That's really not always the case. Here in the forehead of this girl there is a very light part. So I quickly drop in a background first because I want to let the light part stick out. And but you see I first put in that light part here. And it does contain color still. You can see that on my palette. Then I quickly drop in the lighter parts, and so the parts where light can still reach the uh, object, uh, the head in this case, <laughs> it sounds strange to call it an object. Uh, but then it turns away into the shadow part and then uh, very quickly you see that it drops to a very dark color and I connect that a little bit. But you see again a highlight effect but it is not pure white. The same with this mandarin, I uh, just drop in the shadow color, then the object color and now the light part. And in the lightest, lightest part it still contains quite a lot of orangey, uh, yellow orangey uh, uh, light color. And here this is a case where I just used uh, yellow as well to lighten the color. And you see this was a quick color sketch and it is done roughly but still this looks more realistic than painting an orange mandarin and then just slapping a white spot on it. And that's really what this is all about. By the way I just launched my Patreon page. On Patreon you can support me more directly and then you have the benefits that you can watch all my videos without ads. Also you then get access to uh, my color mixing course that I made spe especially for Patreon. In the $10 tier you get access to the same things of course as the $5 tier but as a bonus you every month get a uh, Patreon only tutorial and you get access to all the previous monthly tutorials as well of course. So if you want to support me more directly then see the link in the description. Thanks for watching, see you next time.